digital transformation on retail uh, is not one thing. It's strategy, it's technology, and how or how you want to actually uh, start your transformation. And it's a journey uh, to get on the other end uh, with more profitability and uh, success with the uh, customer. And today, uh, my focus is mainly how do you go about uh, digital transformation, what technologies are out there and how the technologies are evolving and how do you strategize uh, to deploy. So that's what I'm focusing uh, for today's presentation. And I try to do it short so that we have enough time to discuss uh, more on, in the Q&A. So with that, uh, Tag and Track, uh, we are a startup based out of San Diego. And uh, we have, uh, our background is mainly in the wireless technologies and uh, we've been focusing on uh, industrial IoT uh, or retail 4.0 for uh, digital transformation. And that's how uh, we started this uh, uh, company and we've been innovating in uh, different areas. And uh, with this presentation, you get an idea how the technology is evolving and you, you could, uh, pick the right approach for your uh, business. With that, so uh, why it matters? Uh, in this case, um, I just took some examples, like what would be the uh, issues that you want to solve in the supply chain or in your retail? Uh, a lot of it, uh, starts with the being location unknown, there's counterfeit coming up, uh, there is a loss of uh, material or your products, uh, it's called diversion uh, in the supply chain. Then you also have the inventory management, uh, how much inventory is in the supply chain, how much is in the uh, store, uh, so you can get uh, a real time uh, inventory and transform your a uh, whole manufacturing process to just in time rather than demand forecast based manufacturing, which is an older way of doing your um, uh, supply chain ma and manufacturing process. And the other parts of the business is now one side is your supply chain, your sustainability, how do you trace? The second part is how do we actually uh, bring the uh, retail experience? Um, along with the uh, other parts. So if you are investing in traceability, how do you explain that to the customer in a more trustworthy way? Uh, you know, that's an, one of the uh, uh, key factor for customer experience. And then also, how do you manage your store? Uh, that That is becoming the key factor uh, moving forward if you want to really differentiate uh, in the retail space. Uh, what is happening currently? I just took some examples of how the some of the brand retailers are trying to transform and what is the feedback they're getting and where they are. And this is where, uh, as Kevin mentioned, the strategy and the technology is what defines how you transform yourself in the retail. So some of the key ones I want to highlight here is H&M. Uh, uh, started this brand uh, called Conscious. Uh, it's a green label uh, uh, that they wanted to show that they're sustainable, environmental friendly, and uh, they label, they developed this brand called Conscious with a green label. But the problem with that approach was that they had the, the right intention, but they were not able to uh, bring the transparency and trust behind that. Uh, initiative. Uh, with that, what happened is now, you know, people started uh, criticizing that, uh, uh, is that cor actually correct? Or are they really sustainable? How can they uh, prove that they're sustainable? That's one of the criticism they're getting. The other trend we're seeing is that the brands um, actually making sustainable itself as a fashion so that people actually want to buy uh, products that stand behind uh, the sustainability. Uh, and then the other one that we're seeing is Ralph Lauren. Uh, they, they're actually taking step-by-step -step approach. So they started with traceability. So they are using uh, uh, 2D barcodes, which I'll talk about 
uh, later, like how it can be used and how that uh, uh, can be used to foster show, you know, the entire digital transformation with a very simple uh, 2D barcode technology. Then you bring in additional sensors and stuff that we can talk about. Now, if you map that into uh, your supply chain, it's a, you want to be a circular supply chain and then there are different touch points within your supply chain. So you start with raw materials or you know, procurement. From there, you find your manufacturer um, for your goods. Then you take those goods and transport them. And then you go to a warehouse in a centralized place and then you distribute into your retail. But each of these handoffs, they're geographically distributed and there are different pain points at each of that handoff happens. So if it is raw material, then you have origination, transparency, and authenticity of that raw material you're procuring. Is it recycled? Is it sustainably procured? Is it organic? Uh, so those are some of the uh, things that people look for. Uh, then you go to manufacturing, then, you know, is it the right manufacturing process? Is it sustainable? Is it carbon print low? How do you track? Then from there, you go into transportation and logistics, and then it reaches the shelf. But if you did invest in the, all the other points, when it gets to the shelf, how do you actually explain that to the customer that you did invest in all this and this is the right conscious product that you can buy? Uh, those are the challenges that any retail organization right now is trying to solve end to end. And what I wanted to talk about here a little bit is the uh, Jeffrey's uh, hype curve. Usually uh, a lot of it, it's been like last three years I've been hearing this digital transformation and you always go through this hype curve and there's something called uh, crossing the chasm. So we are, uh, currently at that right point where the technologies are coming together and you can cross the, the chasm and get into the other side successfully. And usually what happens is when the hype curve happens, a lot of companies trying to offer some solutions, but then they're not fully thought through. So they, they start fast with the hype, but then they fall because they didn't capture all the requirements. So this is what is happening. So last four years, the industry has been trying to innovate with IoT, try to uh, do different things. And finally, they're coming together to a place where what makes the right approach to uh, have this uh, digital transformation happen. Uh, so if you look at the, uh, your supply chain, you have, as I explained, you have a manufacturing process, then you have distribution, then you have retail, and then the e-commerce with the reverse logistics. If you take the four segments of your supply chain, the way you would go about it is, you know, you start with the type of technology you want to implement for your supply chain, then the type of how you want to gather that information in the cloud in a ubiquitous way that the end customer can look at your entire traceability or supply chain with a click of a button or scan of a code. That's how seamless it should be. If you, we make it too complex, then you lose the uh, customer interest and they might not uh, get the right experience. So the key is to implement this in a ubiquitous way, uh, have a strategy that pick the technology for right for you and then implement it in a phased manner so that your investments are not at risk. Uh, with that, the way I wanted to structure this is that how the uh, the technology is evolving. So if you look at it, initially the entire retail industry was focusing on barcodes or uh, uh, QR codes. I mean, the, it started with UPC barcodes, card evolved into QR codes. Uh, but then these QR codes were not standardized. So people were defining their own uh, SKU numbers and uh, uh, UPC codes, and they would deploy their own method. But if you really want traceability, then there is a standards body called GS1. So the GS1 is a standards body where the retailers, food and beverage industry, apparel industry, and the pharmaceutical, everybody got together and they started defining how do we actually put a, a barcode that can be understood across geographies. Like if I manufactured this in China, I'm trying to sell it in US, 
how can the same barcode be read and understood across this interoperable systems throughout your supply chain. So that's how they came up with the GS1 codes. And that's a, your step one of the process. The QR code is like two cents uh, to implement. We can transform into a digital twin in the cloud and we can track it in, in certain points. But the disadvantage with that is the QR code only gives you the intelligence of what the product is, or we call it QID. Um, it just gives you that intelligence only. If you want additional intelligence, then you need to start bringing in other technologies in. And that's where um, the, the roadmap is evolving. So this chart kind oh. of, Wait, shows you like, hello, Venu. Go ahead. Hi, this is Kevin. Sorry for interruption. Uh, you have four minutes. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. So this kind of gives you the uh, like an RFID, which was very well scaled. It's a passive, very uh, cheap to deploy, but the infrastructure cost is significantly high. So what it's it's good for a very specific application, but it cannot scale across your supply chain. The infrastructure cost is prohibitively expensive. Uh, then in some cases, people did employ active RFID, but the problem is the tag cost is significantly high. Uh, with that, what we're seeing now is the, the industry uh, Bluetooth, which started as an audio technology, has evolved uh, over the past 10 years. And it now reached a place where they are um, designing this technology for retail, for digital transformation, for internet of things. And that is where we are focused on. And that's how the, uh, the technology is evolving. So you, there are different options here. You have passive Bluetooth, like functions like RFID, but transmits in Bluetooth. Active Bluetooth, again, it's, uh, small disposable battery power, and then it, it transmits again in Bluetooth. The good thing with uh, Bluetooth is it not only provides the unique ID of the product, but also provides additional intelligence. So that's the key to this uh, technology. And why that it's important is that the Bluetooth has a huge ecosystem. And it's almost like 4 billion Bluetooth devices get deployed uh, in the worldwide, whether it's in house or in retail or you know supply chain, whatever this uh, technology is being deployed, it's widely adapted and it's growing at uh, 32% uh, in this space. So we see that this is how the, uh, uh, the technology is evolving. And because of this ecosystem is there, your products can interact with other uh, systems in the, in the ecosystem. So it gets a better uh, customer experience. Now, if you bring that to the last mile of your retail, uh, where all you can use this? So you can use it in floor um, for inventory management, uh, counterfeit, traceability, uh, your sales process, and also your point of uh, uh, sale where you can implement other use cases like rental, uh, post-sale, pre-sale, and also resale. Um, so those, that's where the industry uh, is been evolving and we see that that trend is gonna catch up as more enterprises implement the uh, sustainability and bringing the uh, uh, ecological problems they're dealing with, especially in the retail. Um, I will have like few use cases so you can see like what technologies to implement. Um, as I mentioned before, the good first step is to implement a 2D barcode based standardized GS1 codes for traceability. This is inexpensive system. You just implement uh, from your manufacturing onwards, you create a unique digital identity for every SKU you uh, create. And then those SKUs are tra traced all the way to the retail. And by just scanning the barcode, the user can get from the origination how that product uh, reached the retail and what type of uh, carbon footprint it has and all the traceability uh, and sustainability uh, trust that you can build. This is the step one of it. Then if you bring that to the store and you add some intelligence by bringing some sensors into the label, now you not only have the barcode, you added some electronics to the label so that it's now providing additional 
uh, use cases. So this particular use case kind of talks about uh, how the store management can be done, not only for back end of the store, like getting continuous inventory. Uh, you don't need to send a person to track all your inventory. These tags will automatically upload to the cloud uh, every day. What's your con inventory, average inventory changes on top of it. If the user picks up a certain products, now you can implement additional uh, you know, customer experience use cases by recommending them other products that they go with it, you know, the type of uh, uh, you know, new inventory that came in, the sales information, the discounts, all that can be automated with the content. So it's very easy with the Bluetooth to uh, uh, click with, connect with the content because this, all the cell phones are already enabled with Bluetooth. So if your product is enabled with Bluetooth, automatically the user can interact with it by having a, a content app that's pulling the information. So this is another way of another display kiosk where you can do some of the uh, um, user interactions. So this is how the, uh, the technology has been evolving. And one of the use case I wanted to capture is who got it right. And we see this enterprise called Beta. I don't know if you guys heard of it. This is the fastest growing retail. When all the retails last one week, we saw like multiple retails declare bankruptcy, but this retail actually is expanding. They are now at 72 stores worldwide and they're growing at 30 to 40% year over year. Why they're growing? Where other retails are trying to figure out what to do. And the reason why they're do doing is that they are focused on customer experience and they're combining the store experience with online retail so that the customers can come to the stores to experience the product, but then they can still buy it online. And the store is minimalistic designs, nice planograms. So people want to go there to uh, uh, enjoy or experience the product. So that's how uh, we see that it is possible and it's a very focused strategy that you have to adapt to get to a success. Um, and that, uh, you know, they know, this is basically the, the summary. Okay, uh, you Thank implement you. the process proof and you get the uh, traceability, transparency, and trust. You combine these to get to a right uh, retail. 